Kingdom 2019 begins by showing two orphaned boys named Shin and Pio, who have just been bought by an old man named Uncle Wo to serve as slaves. Despite having a tough life, they try to survive and care for each other. They even have the same passion and dream to become one of the great generals after they witness the greatness of a general named General Aoki. In their spare time, after gathering wood and chopping logs, Shin and Pio would practice together in the middle of the forest using wooden swords they had made themselves. Over the years, they have always trained together to improve their fighting skills and train their agility. After practicing every day, they grow into talented swordsmen and great fighters. That day, when they were training together, a general named Cheng saw Pio's sword fighting skill and praised it. The next day, General Cheng came to Uncle Wo's house and informed him that the royal party was conducting recruitment to gather royal soldiers from various regions. And the purpose of him coming to see Uncle Wo is to ask permission so that he is allowed to bring Pio to the kingdom to be trained as one of the special soldiers of the kingdom. Although Shin does not get the same opportunity as Pio, he is happy with the offer and supports Pio in achieving his dream. That night before they parted ways, Pio and Shin practiced sword fighting one last time and promised each other to continue pursuing their dreams. Shin is determined to train harder so that he can catch up with Pio to become a royal soldier and be one step closer to their dream of becoming a great general. In the following days, Shin began to train more diligently in the hill bag and improve his sword technique. His rigorous training proved to have significantly improved his fighting ability after he could easily break a boulder with his wooden sword. A few days later, when he was resting in his hideout hut, Shin was surprised by Pio's arrival who was seriously injured. In his dying state, Pio explains that there has been a coup in the kingdom where the younger brother of the reigning king has sent someone to kill the king. And in that chaos, Pio was sacrificed by royal officials by appointing him to pretend to be the king. Before he breathed his last, he ordered Shin to go to a village contained in the map he had brought. He explains that Shin will meet an army in the village that can train him to become a stronger fighter. That night, Shin ran very fast toward the village that Pio had told. But on the way, he was surrounded by a group of thugs, so he had to fight against them. Fortunately, with the intensive training he had been through all this time, he could easily defeat all the members of the thug group by himself. After continuing the journey, Shin finally arrived at the destination village and found a small hut inhabited by a king named Kin, who had run away from the kingdom. King Kin then explained to Shin that General Cheng had deliberately brought Pio to the kingdom because he had a face that was very similar to him. They wanted to deceive the royal officials who had betrayed and staged a coup with his younger brother named Prince Seikyo. On the other hand, the royal army troops come to Uncle Wo's house and find Pio's lifeless body. A general named Ji, an accomplice of Prince Seikyo, realized that the person he had previously killed was not King Kin but a commoner named Pio. Meanwhile, Shin, who now knows that the kingdom has deceived and sacrificed Pio, feels very angry at King Kin. During the debate, an assassin sent by Prince Seikyo suddenly appeared in their hut and intended to kill King Kin. The assassin instigated Shin to kill King Kin because he and other royal officials had killed Pio. But instead of listening to the assassin's words, Shin attacked and killed him because he suspected that the assassin was the one who killed Pio. After a fierce battle with various deadly attacks, he finally managed to kill the assassin. After the fight, he returned to King Kin and expressed his frustration because he still couldn't accept Pio's death. But King Kin tried to calm Shin and said that all the suffering Pio experienced was a sacrifice to save the entire kingdom. King Kin explained that he had to stay alive so that royal power would not fall into the hands of his younger brother who was very cruel and corrupt. Because if that happened, the kingdom would be destroyed. King Kin then enticed Shin to join him to form a new army and reclaim Prince Seikyo so that Pio's sacrifice and death would not be in vain. On the other hand, Prince Seikyo felt very disappointed and angry after receiving the news that King Kin was still alive. He then ordered his accomplices to send more assassins to hunt down his older brother. The next day when King Kin and Shin were walking through the forest, they were suddenly attacked by an assassin who used a poison needle weapon. Shin fought against the assassin until he managed to slash the man's head with a sword. After successfully killing the man, he suddenly fell and began to lose consciousness due to the poison needle hitting his body. Fortunately, King Kin managed to save Shin and nursed him until he recovered. When Shin had woken up from his sleep, they were surprised by the presence of a group of royal soldiers who barged into their hiding place. Fortunately, the royal army was an army under General Cheng, who was still loyal to King Kin. After declaring his devotion to King Kin, General Cheng helped him to devise a strategy to reclaim the royal throne from Prince Seikyu. On the other hand, although Prince Seikyu still has not succeeded in killing King Kin, he decides to declare himself the new king in front of the entire army of the kingdom. Meanwhile, King Kin felt pessimistic because he only had an army far less than the royal armies. Hearing this, one of the generals advised him to meet the mountain tribes and ask them for help in forming a larger army alliance. 
Knowing this, King Kin agreed and immediately ordered the entire army to depart for the mountain tribal area. After going through a long journey with various challenging paths, King Kin and his army arrived at the border region of the mountain tribes. But upon arriving there, they were not received well enough by the mountain tribal troops and were instead taken hostage by them. After being in front of the leader of the mountain tribe, King Kin conveyed his intention that he asked the mountain tribe to help him reclaim the royal throne that had fallen to his younger brother. Hearing this, the mountain tribe leaders refused his request because they had been betrayed by the royal highs, killing many mountain tribe troops. King Kin did not want to give up so easily, so he apologized to all the members of the mountain tribe for the mistakes made by the past royal officials. Hearing the sincerity of his apology, the mountain tribe leader decided to forgive him and help him to reclaim the royal throne. The mountain tribesmen will ally with his army to invade and attack the royal palace. After that, King Kin and the others began strategizing to attack the royal forces from various directions. He would send Xin and General Cheng as the leader of the first army while he would disguise himself as a member of the mountain tribe and become the leader of the second army along with the mountain tribe and mountain tribe leader. The next day after the army of the mountain tribe and the army of King Kin arrived in the kingdom, the leader of the mountain tribe met the commander of the kingdom and said that her troops would join the army of Prince Saik Yu's kingdom. Hearing the good intentions of the mountain tribes, the royal commander allowed the mountain tribe troops to enter the kingdom. After all, the mountain tribesmen and King Kin's army had successfully entered the kingdom, and they immediately attacked the army of soldiers guarding the gate. After that, King Kin ordered Shin and the first army to go through the secret route, while he and the second army would attack through the main route with the mountain tribe leader. A colossal battle soon began with the mountain tribe troops attacking the kingdom's defense soldiers. With the help of the mountain tribe's fighting abilities and physical strength, King Kin managed to defeat most of the royal soldiers. On the other hand, Shin and the first army had to fight against a mighty giant monster to infiltrate the secret passage. Although the troops initially seemed to have difficulty defeating the monster, Shin finally managed to kill the monster with a very powerful sword strike. After that, Shin and the first squad managed to get inside the royal palace to kill Prince Seikyo. However, Prince Seikyo arrogantly sat relaxed on the throne while calling out to one of the strongest generals in the kingdom, General Ji. Shin was challenged to a one-on-one -on -one duel with General Ji, and he accepted the challenge without hesitation. The battle between them was very fierce because both of them had very great sword fighting skills. However, Shin had a much stronger spirit and determination than General Ji, so in the end, Shin was the one who won the duel. After seeing General Ji dead in front of him, Prince Seikyu decided to run away from the palace. But in front of the palace gates, he was already surrounded by King Kin and the Mountain Tribe Army. King Kin didn't need much effort to fight against Prince Seikyu because he could easily defeat him with one hit. Shortly after, General Aoki, the strongest general of the neighboring kingdom, came to King Kin and asked why he fought the battle. King Kin replied that he had to reclaim the royal throne so that royal power would not be abused by royal traitors. He intends to unite all the kingdoms in Japan to create justice and peace for all kingdoms. Hearing his explanation, General Aoki agreed to his wishes and promised to help him make peace. However, one of the royal generals still loyal to Prince Seikyo could not accept King Kin's victory and immediately ordered his troops to attack General Aoki and King Kin. But with full confidence, General Aoki could easily defeat all the soldiers with a single attack. Seeing this, the general who supported Prince Seikyo felt very angry and moved to attack King Kin. Fortunately, Shin quickly resisted the general's attack and directly drew his sword, making the general die. Shin's heroic actions were praised by General Aoki, and even he said that one day Shin would become one of the strongest generals in the kingdom. After praising Shin, General Aoki and his troops left the kingdom, but before he left, Shin gave his name and asked him to remember the name. Now that Prince Seikyu has been defeated and all the treacherous generals have died, King Kin and his army are celebrating their victory because they have succeeded in seizing the royal throne from the traitors. The mountain tribesmen also celebrated the victory as if it were their own. Before the leader of the mountain tribe left the royal palace, he gave Shin a sword of pride as a reward for Shin's courage and passion. Now with the acknowledgement of a general as strong as General Aoki and the proud sword of the mountain tribe, Shin had become closer to his dream of becoming a great general in the future kingdom. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, to be more careful because even the people around us can betray and stab us in the back. While Shin's experience also makes us realize that in a tough life like the life of a slave, we can still change all that by having the passion for achieving bigger dreams.